Yeah, I'm Michael Archer. I'm a professor in the University of New South Wales. I see the kangaroo industry as probably the best example of an industry that is sustainably utilizing a native resource in a way that not only doesn't endanger that resource, but arguably enhances it, improves the chances of it surviving into the future. Kangaroos are very key in the Australian environment. There are over 50 different kinds here. So we're in a curious situation now where since Europeans came into Australia, we've been obliterating most of the carnivores that naturally controlled these kangaroos. So that there was always a balance in Australia. The, if the herbivores didn't have the carnivores to control them, their numbers would build up and they begin to damage the vegetation and degrade the environment. We have to have some other means now of restoring that management, that balance, that was a natural part of Australian ecosystems that's been upset since we arrived. Having the kangaroo numbers explode uncontrollably has two impacts. One, it starts to endanger other species in the environment. But second, it also endangers the kangaroos. Because when your numbers start to build up like that, it can't go on infinitely. There's a limited amount of resources. What happens is the kangaroos then start to die horrible deaths from starvation and disease. The alternative is to have the kangaroo industry out there very strategically harvesting with the humane ways of doing this right up front. Um, it's so much of a better way of restoring this balance that's otherwise been destroyed by Europeans since we arrived. The industry works with very clear guidelines. It operates every year with a reassessment of the kangaroo numbers and the quota set um, is based on what is an annual assessment of the population size. So, it's done in a way that can in no conceivable way endanger those kangaroo populations. Its strategic management of this kangaroo issue is critical. It, it's very interesting to think about the role of the landholders um, in this whole process of helping to restore the balance of kangaroos in Australia. It was an ad hoc process before the kangaroo industry became involved. And it was based in large part on the fact that many grazers really didn't value kangaroos. They saw them as competition for their stock. They didn't enjoy having a kangaroo come belting through the, the front windshield of their car when they're driving around at night. And when the numbers build up, that's an increasing risk. So they were quite happy to see kangaroos disappear from the land. Our interest in seeing the grazers understand that this is one of the most valuable resources that their land produces um, has two strings. One is, it is a wonderfully valuable resource and we know it's much healthier for people. There's a whole range of reasons why. But it's also critical for the environment. If we can find ways to entice the grazer to not find kangaroos a nuisance or be indifferent to them, but actually value them as a sustainably harvestable resource, then they will start to look after the native vegetation that produces those kangaroos. So how do we get the grazer involved? They're driven by economic needs, understandably. So it might be useful if the industry can find a way to integrate the grazer into the whole industry so that from the beginning, it's the grazer's land producing the kangaroos. If the grazer can get some percentage of the value of the harvested kangaroo, then their sense of value will start to grow and they will lock into this whole process in a way that everybody will benefit from. It may be necessary to find ways to increase the demand for kangaroos, make the public aware of what a wonderful opportunity it is to have kangaroo instead of just introduced animals like cattle and sheep. So I see the key to this is probably increasing the understanding about the value of kangaroos in the market. Value them in every way that we can, and that includes sustainably harvesting kangaroos for food.